welcome to Zambia. We are so glad you're here. My name is Brant, by the way, and this is Cure Up Close. And you're gonna get a chance to see what I think is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And honestly, it is. Anybody who's been to this hospital or any cure hospital is like, this is, it's like, it's like if the kingdom of God had an embassy in the world, that's what these hospitals are. You're gonna see kids who have been considered cursed their whole lives uh, because they have some sort of a, a condition that's treatable. And you're gonna see them get healing. And it is so beautiful. And you're gonna see kids get healed. It doesn't cost them anything. Because of, of you, people watching this right now who have paid for the surgeries, we wanna thank you for that. And give you an up close view, like if you were at the hospital yourself, what it would look like. And I think you're gonna love it. There are a few things you should know before we go too far. First, the Cure Hospital opened in 2002 with support from the Bite Trust, so locals here call it Bite Cure. Also, the hospital here treats 1,500 kids per year on average, and even though most are living in poverty, they don't pay a cent. The team here provides surgical care for orthopedic conditions like club foot and bowed legs, reconstructive cases like burns and cleft palate, and they provide ENT procedures, which stands for ear, nose, and throat. And unfortunately, Cure Zambia is the only pediatric surgical hospital in this entire country of over 19 million people. I always wanna show people this. So I'm so glad you're on the ride with us. You're gonna to get to see this. So welcome to Zambia. <laughs> Zambia is a rental country. When you come here, you will feel free. Zambia is famous for abundant water bodies and natural resources. And we have more than 72 tribes within Zambia. Zambia is a big country, yeah. very peaceful. There's no fight, there's no anything. We love each other. More than eight neighbors, yeah, almost nine now, yes, that are surrounding us. We are very welcoming and very loving and accommodating. When it comes to culture, I'm telling you it's 100% nice. I think Zambians uh, are naturally willing to lend a helping hand. One of the challenges for most people is access uh, to healthcare constrained by, by the distance. Zambia is vast and the population is spread out yet the health facilities are scarce. So part of the challenge is getting to the nearest healthcare facility. So children remain in the countryside because of lack of access. Children remain in the countryside because of various other reasons, including stigma. Others, they have even stopped going to church because of the state of their children. In Africa, per se, they are Cases which are called, there are cases which are considered as a case when a, a child has a certain disability, which also brings failure for that person to meet God. Because if us as a church we ca we carry that same mindset, it means we only go to a certain uh, type of people and avoid people who are having challenges in their in their lives. See you later, Tilly. Thanks, man. Frida. Hi, hi, hi. Great Welcome. to see you. Nice Thank to see you. you. Welcome, Brian. Thank you. Welcome to Bed Cure Hospital. Thank you. We have, our, we have our friends here following us, so I want to show them what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. So excited. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. This is uh, uh, the reception, the first point of arrival. Right. Yeah, everyone, then they are given cards to go either to orthopedics or, or ear, nose and throat clinic. Mm -hmm. This is our administration block. This side we have uh, uh, the chapel. We also have the spiritual department. Mm -hmm. This is our outpatient department grant. When they come from the reception, the parents with their children, if they are coming for orthopedic, mm -hmm. they come here, they wait here, then they are ushered to see the surgeons. This is our physio uh, department and um, 
Uh, this is where the children are brought after the surgery, if they need rehabilitation mm -hmm. or support with movement, with standing. That one there is our playground. That is beautiful. Yeah, kids love it uh, when they come here. Yeah, I would think. Before surgery, yeah. they spend the whole day there. Uh -huh. You have to go and grab them to come and eat. Otherwise, <laughs> the kids play and Good. spend most of their time when so, they are in, in the world. It's, it's just so amazing. The kids love it. Uh -huh. And I think it eases their anxiety uh -huh. before they go for surgery. This is where uh, we keep our patients. If they are not yet ready for surgery or they have been uh, after surgery, they have been discharged but they stay very far and they need to see the doctor within a short space of time. Mm -hmm. So when the children are admitted, they some, sometimes they stay longer. When they stay longer, we have Lillian who works with them to uh, play with them, but also for those that are in school and are staying a little longer to offer some uh, basic academic uh, continued learning. So I've been to a lot of the hospitals and that is a question that comes up. People are like, well, so how do the people eat while mm. they're here? They're staying in a hospital. Mm. Normally mm. you don't get food at a government mm. hospital mm. or something, mm. but mm. they're staying here. Yeah. How's it work? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we provide uh, three meals. <laughs> I don't know if you know it. It's called Impa. No. That it smells good. It's like an eggplant. It smells nice, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So this is our kitchen. This is where all the meals are prepared. It's wonderful. Yeah. Everybody eats here. Little we, kids. Yeah. Moms. We all eat what the patients eat. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah. In the yeah. American hospital, that's not how they do it. Ah, really? No. No. Uh, uh. Very rare for the surgeons to eat with the patients. Ah. Yeah. Ah. I no. Love here. That, though. Here we do. Yeah. Here we do. And um, yeah. It just provides us an opportunity to also have a sense of uh, family. Yeah, yeah, right, I bet. Yeah. Uh, we have three theater rooms there. We do about uh, 58 surgeries per week in, in that theater. So we'll get to see the operating theater here in a little bit, and it's going to be very fun and very interesting. It's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, this is where the ENT clinic is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's a very busy clinic. Yeah, we actually ENT surgeons in the country, we have uh, we have four and two of them, uh, one works here full time, the other one works part time. Huh. And that four is for the whole country. Finally, we have the training center, uh, you know, for, for our clinical staff, they have to have continuous uh, medical uh, learning. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we, we do uh, provide the training here. ECUA is a Christian organization. First, we believe in God. After God, we do the patients. Yes, I like working for children. Yes. <laughs> it gives us satisfaction. Personally, like for me, I get a satisfaction knowing that I have been able to help somebody who's had probably a challenge uh, for years. They were born with it and for them to finally get some help and change their lives, um, it gives me the zeal to, to be able to come here every single day. I just love helping people, uh, working with uh, people and uh, just reaching out to them and um, impacting their lives in a positive way and of course introducing them to Christ. I chose to work at Cure actually because of the children. It's so fun to work with children. It's, it brings the little child in you. It, you see the, the glory of God in being with kids. So I love that. 
The most meaningful part of my job is seeing the recovery process of a child um, who had this disability and now is able to overcome this disability because we touch their lives in small little different ways but this child has a happy face, happy feet, happy legs. That for me is very touching to see a child smile because of what we've done. Now you've got kids? I do. How many? Four. Yeah, four. Do you think being a mom gives you kind of special connection to the people definitely, here? Definitely, definitely. It really does. Because when I go in the ward to see the children, sometimes I walk, I just walk there to see the children that are there and what conditions they have and what we've been able to do, the change that is in their lives. And sometimes I just lift them and hug them and just feel like it's, it's my child's life that has been changed. Mm. So I think it, des it, it definitely helps to connect with the children and also to feel the joy mm. that the parents feel when the, the, child is, uh, the child's life or physical appearance is, is transformed. And also that it is a blessing that the Lord has provided this hospital where they can come and have uh, uh, international health standard or service at no cost to them. Let me ask you a question about that. How do yeah. they react when they find out that it's, there is no cost to them? Oh, it's like, wow. Like when we, <laughs> we, we go to the communities and actually share that with them, they actually find it difficult to believe. They are like, are you sure? Sometimes we, we really like, uh, we are filled with tears in our eyes when we see the joy, sometimes when a child is taken to, uh, for surgery to the theater, particularly when it's a uh, uh, cleft and palate, uh, mm. and the child comes back uh, for, for, for uh, orthopedic surgery, it takes a few days before you can see. But for, for, for cleft, you know, the child comes back and the, the mouth is closed. And when you, you see the parents, the way they scream in the ward, oh my God, sometimes we just watch them and tears roll down our cheeks because they're like, is this my child? Are you sure? Is this the one? No, 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 this is not the one. Go and bring back my child. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just so amazing. That's what somebody told me that Jesus healed to show that the kingdom of God was here. Mm. But like, it's an advanced trailer. It's like a little bit of heaven, mm. like a little glimpse of mm. everybody mm. being healed. And mm. I really love that mm. idea. It is a glimpse. It's, it's, it's a fortress yeah. of, 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 of God's healing and the, the, the joy that we will have. Hope you enjoyed meeting Frida and the staff. Um, we are going to meet some of the kids, the best parts of the kids. I mean, love the staff too. It's all good. But we're going to go to the children's ward. Follow me. It is a wonderful place to be. It's kind of a highlight whenever you visit one of the hospitals. So, hey. So this is the beautiful Maureen and Maria. Uh, Maria is Maureen's mom. Maria is very excited that her daughter is getting surgery and it's in a few days. Yeah, and they're both really excited about it. So we know some of their story and Maureen, the little one here has put up with a lot and her story is about to be changed because of the surgery. It's gonna happen in a few days to, to correct her bow leg condition. That has been a major problem for the family. They faced a lot of discrimination and pain from within their own circle. And now things are gonna be different. So I think about what an honor it is that we get to be part of this. Tell us about Maureen. She seems very energetic. What kind of girl is she? Oh, we are quite champions, Sansa. She does have joy. She does. She's a joyful kid. Well, how did you first find out about Cure? I didn't find out about Cure. 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 
Voilà, va faire oui, non? Quand il voit là, il y a un pantanche. Voilà, un pantanche, là, va faire oui, non? Mon Dieu, allez ça. She's very excited, by the way. When she found out she was going to get surgery, her reaction was yes, please, over and over. So we're so excited about it. She's got a lot of energy too. We can tell that. We now have the privilege of talking with Miss Miriam. Miriam, it's nice to meet you. How are you today? I'm fine. When do you get a surgery? Do you know? Um, I think um, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow? Yes. How will it make a difference in your life to have your legs straightened? I want just to put them straight because I want to finish a school. Yes. What do you want to do with your life? What would you like to do? I want just to be a doctor. Just to be a doctor? Yes. How about a surgeon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be awesome. You'd be so good at it. I am sitting with someone who is remarkable. Her name is Edida. Uh, she's got seven kids. One of them is Lemmy. Lemmy is turning 19 soon, and he has dealt with twisted legs his whole life. And he's getting a surgery, and we've been talking a little bit about what it's like to watch a child grow up like that. And he was found in his village recently when the hospital here sent out doctors to look at for kids that need healing. And so Lemmy's amazing. And he just had surgery. He's in recovery. We'd be talking to him right now, but she's been waiting outside. And she said she's very thankful to God that he even has a shot at this and that this is being done. So we're ecstatic for Adida. We're ecstatic for Lemmy, whose life is going to change dramatically. And it's happening right now. So like I said, this place is like holy ground. This is, this is because of you too. If you give the cure, please make the connection like God allows us to be part of Lemmy's story and Edita's story, and it's a dream come true. We are sitting here with Dominic, awesome dad, his son, Malingua. He's got five kids. Their oldest actually has cerebral palsy and has been helped here at the hospital. Um, this little guy has burn contractures and he's not able to move his legs freely as a result, but he's about to get a procedure that's gonna change everything. Most of the people here in the world, they are not from within. Very far. Kasama, six, seven hundred kilometers from here. That's right. Like my sister there, she's coming from the southern province. Almost 400 kilometers from here. But they do come here, meaning, this is the only option. This is the only best. This is the only place they can get the best. <laughs> for me, I'm not paying for the services for this. But someone somewhere I know is paying <laughs> massively. Which is great. Which is great. So so super to me. Uh -huh. it yeah. Is. Pretty good investment. Pretty good yeah, investment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Very, very good. This is the best investment. It totally is. The Wait, best come investment on. someone can do. We are with Moses, and he is an awesome kid. We've had a chance to meet him. What difference will it make to have your legs all fixed? The way my legs was, where they were folded now, when they work on me, the difference is that I'll have straight legs and I'll be able to do a lot of things. Yeah, what do you want to do once your legs are straight? I'll be able to go to school and to go to church. What do you like the most about being here? Uh, I, I, I love what I love about the hospital is that the hospital works well with children and that uh, they, they, their attitude is good. What did you come to do here at the hospital? Oh, well, <laughs> we, we want to tell people in America about Cure and let them see what this hospital does. People, people love to pray for the kids here, so it's nice for them to see some of them. We, can you tell them we also come because it's really fun to play with the kids? At 40, Now, let's play it this way. Play the game. Now, you. Come on, guys. <laughs>
Time for a hard-hitting interview with my interview subject. What is your name? Loveness. Did she say loveness? It is loveness, right? It's loveness? Yeah? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, you're doing loveness, so good. Loveness, loveness, loveness. Toko, how old are you? Eight. You're eight. Fantastic. Um, so, I want to ask you what happened to your arms? I burnt myself. Oh, you burnt yourself. What happened? My brother was carrying a big pot of water and I bashed in the pot. Then the water spilled on me. Was it painful? I bet. Does it still hurt? No? Okay. What's happening now? What's the next thing that happens for your arms? They wash me and put some more bandages. Have they been nice to you here? Good. I knew they would be. I mean, it's a pretty good hospital. Do you have a favorite color? Yes. What? Paper. Ask me some questions. Okay, what do you like the most? What do I like the most? Um, I have to say my wife. I, and I believe it too, I mean, I don't have to say it. But, um, my wife, she's super nice. She's a very good teacher. And my mother too is a teacher. Oh really? What else do you want to ask me? Oh, that's all. That's it, okay. I think we covered it. This has been kind of a give and take between me, Brant, and Toko, who's awesome. Thank you for this time together. Does he have club foot? Is that what's going on? Hello, I'm so no more about my career, co. Of what I should say, can I do some lawyer? Oh, you more now come with a defy up a sock to more come control and or cook and control the name come cake hot sir. Wouldn't the pop we know more now more pan up and book money can change. What are her hopes for Jackson in the future? What she what was she like? It's not a way that for Jack and I now push an angry school and go back to my people. She says she would love Jackson to finish school and be a preacher man. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's fantastic. God, tell her God bless you. It's so nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very excited to be with Dr. Moyo, orthopedic surgeon here at Cure. Thanks for making time. Yes. Like I'm, the whole goal here is for people to feel like they visited the hospital because most people don't ever get to visit it. Oh uh, yeah, that's nice. And I feel like if they did, they would go. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Did you feel like in the hospital or somewhere at home? Well, to feel like you were in the hospital. Mm. Well, not as a patient. But <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying not to give them that experience, but yes. like just to see what it's like to visit. So help, help me understand, and for people that, that don't, they don't know necessarily, what procedures are you doing the most? We treat um, uh, the deformed legs, mm -hmm. hip, knee, and foot. We do also some trauma surgery for those who are injured and we do help also those who are referred to us. We do bone surgery for children. It can be metabolic surgery. Metabolic means that the mechanism of the body is not growing well. We do congenital diseases for the bone. We do traumatic disease and we do infectious disease like uh, uh, osteo uh, osteomyelitis, uh, those infections of the bone. So it's a large variety of the bone surgery we do. And not just the bone, bone, joint, and muscles. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but my experience with clubfoot is that I told you that I grew up in a rural area. I grew up with uh, my younger cousin. He had clubfoot. So being the elder brother, because the school was like two kilometers far away, most of the time I used to carry him coming back because he couldn't walk. So I experienced with him the stigma, pain, desperation. Sometimes some patient can say, why me? Why this? So I went through with him. I, I can recall how many times we were looking for doctors in the mission hospitals. So, but I couldn't help. And that made you passionate about club foot in particular because you got Yes, it because I, I can say I live with a club foot patient as myself. But Cure is very special. Why? Because at Cure, our quality definition is a bit different. Our quality definition is what impact do we have? What impact are we making from this simple, this procedure? So that's why at Cure, 
we don't just take our brain. Yes, we take our brain, that is scientific part. But our heart, the religion part, we put them together. So this is Elizabeth, uh, she's five years, going to be six very soon. So she was born with club feet, a deformity which makes the foot to go, to turn down or inward. And in the common language, they it say it's walking the foot upside down. So Elizabeth eventually had the feet a bit corrected. Then, according to the mother, it reoccurred. And eventually, uh, they came to us. When they came to us, that was uh, two months ago. We, it was very severe to, to compare to this position. So for today, we are going to do uh, one leg, and next time we'll do the second foot, and then they can go home. <laughs> they will not leave this place until the other one is done, <laughs> so that they can go with the two feet uh, corrected. When it's all done, will she be able to run normally, walk normally? Yes, but of course I cannot say everything goes always okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even in the best surgical places, there are some cases whereby you doubt a bit the result, mm -hmm. but most of them, they do well. But this will change her life? Completely. And some, they don't even remember that they had surgical surgery done. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this time that you've accorded us to work on Elizabeth. Thank you, Lord, that whatever is going to be done here, it won't be done by us, but by you and the Holy Spirit. We just want to thank you, Jehovah, that indeed uh, you are the God who heals. Thank you, Father, even for your presence in this time. We just surrender everything that we will do in this place in your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming with me to the operating room. Um, this is a big moment for Elizabeth. Uh, she's got severely clubbed feet. She's five years old. She's the sweetest thing. Her life is gonna change. He was just saying as he was starting a surgery that if she doesn't have this procedure done on her, her clubbed feet, that she'll be the victim of everyone, is how he put it. But her life is gonna change completely because of this. Uh, I always get emotional. <laughs> Let's see, because it's like, uh, you just know how much God loves her. And uh, this, again, this is, this is a, a moment of, to me, this is like the best worship service in the world, because this is all done as an act of, as an act of worship to God. And I love that we all have that unity of purpose, uh, from donors to surgeon to nurses to techs to, to everyone and outside this operating room. It's a very sweet thing. So that's one of the things I love about this place is the medical care and the fact that it's combined with spiritual care because these kids have been through so much and it's more than just taking care of their physical wounds or the things they've gone through. It's emotional, it's spiritual. And so I'm really excited to show you the spiritual side of things here at Cure. It's all, it's all of a piece, but I love what the spiritual department does along with the medical department. We're gonna talk with Terrence, who is the spiritual director here at Cure Zambia. Very happy to be with 
Terrence Combe, and he is the spiritual director here at Cure in Zambia and has been for the last two, three years. And so glad you're here. Thanks for what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. So tell us what you do, like for people who aren't familiar with how Cure works and what a spiritual director does, what do you do? We thrive to provide the social, emotional, psychological, and spiritual assistance hmm. yeah, to both the patients and the caregivers, including uh, our, our colleagues, the members of staff that we are working with. Then in the community, we thrive to undertake trainings, especially among the ministry partners who are often the pastors, because then we want to ensure that they understand a little more about cure, and then they can get to tell the cure story. Uh, so that wherever they are, as they serve in their communities, they can reach out uh, to most of uh, the, the members of the churches. Mm -hmm. And then they, they can still be able to refer some patients to the hospital. How do you work in tandem with the medical aspect, with the medical team? How does your team work in tandem regarding a patient? We bank on one scripture from Luke chapter 9 and verse 2. And then it's a question where the disciples asked the Lord Jesus Christ when they found somebody who was born blind. And the disciples were asking, did this man get blind because he sinned or his parents sinned? And so a lot of other controversies centering around that. But then in response, Jesus indicated to say, this does not mean that the parents sinned, neither did the patient sin, but it happened that he, the glory of God may be displayed in such in such an act, and so it's it's one uh, important message that we tend to communicate, because we understand, of course, it's not that easy for them to to cope up with such a condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they hear a lot from their families and the community, mm -hmm. but we encourage them to say, even with such a condition, God has not forgotten about them. God still loves them. He still cares. Mm -hmm. God still wants them close, mm -hmm. and they they can equally look up to him and, and, and get edified, get encouraged, because at the end of the day, he's the one guiding them through and through, helping them even when they have such uh, challenges. Terence Kambe, thank you so much, sir. Thank Thanks you. for what you do, the whole staff. Sincerely grateful. I like that in Africa, you can hang on for a long time. It's all right. I like this. I can do this. Yeah, thank you, Brian. <laughs> Thanks, thank you so much. Thank wow. you. After seeing the videos of other people who are getting well, that's when I, I told my dad that let us try bed cure than just doing nothing or just stopping here. No, maybe this is the way that God has made for us. Maybe bed cure can, can be the place that I can find my cure. I came to bed cure, but now David is very fine. And I thank God for that. All of the people that side, they are very good people. I can't lie. Mm, they treated us very well without paying any coin. I appreciate BitCure for taking care of me, and I appreciate my doctor very well. I thank God that I'll, I'll keep praying for him, that God give him many wisdom and courage. Like I was interacting with a lot of people and I saw other people who were getting cured that I had bed cure. And that's when I also said that if he could walk, then I could too. David's life changed, changed, completely changed, <laughs> completely changed. And I'm very happy. Yes, I'm very happy. Nima, Nima, I'm very happy. Nima, I'm very happy because my life changes because bed care protected me. Also, I can manage not to go at school. I can manage to do everything. When I finish my education, I want to come there. I want to start working at bed care. That is my dream. I want to just, I want to be like Dr. Strong. After just seeing those other physiotherapists at bed care hospital, that's when I got the courage that that's the only thing I can do. So every day when I wake up, I always tell myself, early in the morning, when I finish school, I want to be a physiotherapist. That's the only job that's in my mind right now. Once they receive this, this treatment, these children have a complete change of life. They are, um, they are, they are restored, they are, they are 
potential to rise to the occasion and attain whatever whatever height that uh, the Almighty God designed for them. Imagine the child is disabled, the family is uh, in, in poverty, and then they have nothing to do. So what do we do? We have to bring hope to say with God, all things are possible. Apart from the, the medical help that they are, they are receiving, they can see that also spiritually they can be helped and they can be encouraged. And so in such a way, they have seen that they, they, that bed cure as is providing an holistic kind of service which does not only end up uh, just looking at their physical need but also spiritual need. So that partnership is working so well. And this is the role that Petkyo is playing right now. Outreach programs deep into the communities to go and bring out these children that are hidden away from the community and bring them back for treatment. I would only take this opportunity to um, encourage the Cure Zambia and all the sponsors to continue uh, playing this role, supporting the hospital. And I want to reassure them that uh, all the investment they put in is the money well spent. So a lot of people who are watching this are people who have given. Yeah. And I tell them, like, it's one thing for me to give or be involved, because I've, I've seen it. Mm. But then they have not, I mean, they're st they still do it. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them, as somebody who sees this every day, mm -hmm. to, I don't know, to encourage them or just mm. let them know how valuable this is? I don't know. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Yeah, what I would say is that um, the, the, they are giving is not in vain. It's changing lives in reality, and I see it every day. And uh, the joy and the change is remarkable. And uh, it's not only once off, it changes the life of the person, the entire life of a child and also of the family. We love what God is doing through this hospital. Like the Lord is healing people and it doesn't cost so much money to, to come like so people are paying their money some of them aren't rich like they're doing it because they love god and they, yeah. they want to care for other people so if you had a chance to talk to one of them uh, to me it's a privilege because uh, without the help from where we shall. This would have been very expensive. Very expensive. And the, it's one God who can reward them. Please convey my appreciation and the, thanking them what they are doing. Please let, let them continue. Uh, as for me, I have nothing to give them but to appreciate God what is doing through their efforts. But from here, hmm, it's massive. It's massive what we are getting from here. I hope you've really enjoyed seeing what Cure does. I always want to take people here so bad. And every time I'm here and I see what they do physically for the kids, spiritually for the kids and their families, I feel like I'm seeing the kingdom of God in action. So I hope just bringing you through here with the camera has been helpful and you've gotten a little bit of a glimpse of that. I love other people being able to see what's going on. And Justin was actually supposed to call me and he's right on time. Justin is the CEO of Cure. I guess we'll do FaceTime here. Justin. Hi, Brant. Uh, greetings from Zimbabwe. We're here in the operating room about to uh, watch a child have, have a life-changing surgery and uh, I'm happy to see that you're enjoying your time in Zambia. Oh, I, I have been. Every time I see these kids and how the staff serves these kids with such joy and love, it's, it is fantastic. So thanks for letting me come here. I think visiting a hospital is a life-changing experience. I know it's been for me. Even before I worked here at Cure, I was able to visit a hospital and it really did change the entire uh, trajectory of my life and even 
my priorities. So sometimes people can come and visit and it's great. Most of the time people can't. And so I'm really grateful for you taking the time out of your schedule to invite us all to visit you at the Zambia Hospital. Yeah, what's wild is thinking this is going on all over the world at Cure Hospitals and just thinking about all the kids and all the families who are getting served like this. Yeah, um, our hospitals are busy and they're getting busier, uh, which is great because we are here to serve as many kids as possible and to love and invite them into God's kingdom. And it's been really exciting over these last few years as we've added more clinical staff and more doctors and increased our ministry outreach outside the hospitals to see how many children that we've been able to serve. Uh, this year we're serving 5,000 more than we did last year. And hopefully next year we can serve thousands more than we did this year. So that's wonderful though, 5,000 more kids, that's amazing. Yeah, the work is big. I, I don't know if people realize how complex this is or how complicated to do all of this. It's a big deal. Running specialized surgical hospitals in difficult and harsh environments is very complicated. Um, and thankfully, God's provided very talented staff who can do this as if they were in a operating room in the United States. Yeah, seeing the care here in Zambia, it's, it is world class. Hope you have a great time there in Zambia. Say hi to everyone for me. All right, cool, thank you. And this is where you come in. It's where I come in to our goal for this event tonight. We are hoping for and honestly asking God for 200 surgeries to get paid for. So 200 kids being able to walk or being restored in a different way. Like we can do this together tonight, but that is the goal, 200. But in my mind, I'm like, why, why not do 300? Let's do this. It's this good. I gotta tell you too, when we throw out a goal like that, I feel like if you've seen it, up close that's why we call the cure up close there's some things you recognize wait there's a treasure here and jesus even told a story about a, a hidden treasure or a pearl a great price and a merchant who knew how much that pearl would be worth because he saw it he saw it up close he knew this was valuable he realizes wait i can go all in with this these kids i hope you realize these kids are the pearl like we can see the kingdom of god in them a lot of people don't see the value, but we do. And so I hope you realize how precious they are. Little girls that we've seen, little boys that we've seen, each one of them is so valuable. So my approach has been, since I've gotten a chance to see it up close, I wanna go all in. I wanna give more and more. I wanna pay for more and more surgeries. And we get to do this together. That's the wonderful thing. It's not just the staff here or some, some group way out there. All of us together are making this happen. And what an honor it is to even be part of their lives. For these kids, these moms, these dads who are desperate, and we get to show them the love of God. So my experience has been the more I've given to cure, we've been fine. And now that we've seen it up close, we recognize what a treasure these pearls are. So why don't you join us right now, if you would. There are three ways you can give, you have options. You can use the QR code, which you'll see in just a moment, or just use our website, it's cure.org slash up close, again, cure org slash up close and there is a third option you can mail a check old school style we'll put the address up on the screen in just a bit and you're probably wondering how much to give and of course that's up to you but here's an idea of how much things cost the exact costs vary from week to week but helping a child like elizabeth walk properly costs approximately fifteen hundred dollars repairing a cleft lip and palate is closer to a thousand dollars and castings cost about three hundred dollars Another option is to provide a monthly contribution of $40 or $75 or whatever you can afford. Recurring gifts are a reliable source of support for the hospital, and it means you're helping a different child every single month. What you are about to see as we close it out here from Zambia is a wonderful thing that happens a lot here at the hospital. And that is some very special people singing praises to God. So thanks for joining us. And what a wonderful thing to have you us worship through giving and singing at the same time. Thanks for making his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So glad you joined me.